But okay, let's move on. So you have a tale from the trading desk you want to share with us. So uh, why don't you uh, fire away? Okay, so this is, this is not exactly a tale from a trading desk, but it's a tale from early in my career. Um, so I think many people know I started off uh, you know, in the high net worth group for a very large uh, global investment bank. I started in New York, but very shortly thereafter moved to San Francisco. And it was our job to call wealthy individuals and convince them that they should place their assets with us, and, you know, let us take care of their financial uh, necessities, right? And so what we would do is we would scan the headlines for one company that was acquiring another company or a company that had some kind of a liquidity event, and then we would call the executives of the company being acquired or, you know, that was being sold and, you know, convince them that this windfall that they were going to receive uh, should be placed with us. And so, you know, it was always kind of a scramble um, because everybody wanted these leads, right? And so you kind of had to get there first and get your call in first. And anyway, long story short, I came across the, a company out of Santa Cruz, which is a surf town about an hour south of San Francisco. Some guy, you know, had sold his, uh, he, he had a radio business where he had a couple uh, different programs on a radio and it, he had sold it to some bigger media company like Liberty Media or Viacom or something. And it wasn't for an enormous amount of money, but it was like five to $10 million. So it wasn't peanuts either. Um, a lot of money to me, but, you know, compared to a lot of Silicon Valley guys, it wasn't an enormous sum. And so it, it, was, it kind of went overlooked. And so, you know, I called the guy up and, uh, you know, had to cold call him, but got him on the phone and, you know, arranged for a meeting. So now I'm going down to the meeting and I told a buddy of mine that was a little bit older than me and um, he worked for the same company and, you know, had been successful and was further along in his career. So anyway, he said, I'll go with you. I'll help you close the business. So I thought that sounded great. So I pick him up, you know, and this is a big meeting for me. I'm trying to build my business. I've got my, you know, pinstripe suit on and a nice tie, you know, pressed white shirt and I pick my buddy up and he looks pretty nice as well. So we drive down to Santa Cruz and we go to find the office and we can't even find it. And we finally find it. And it's, it's like the backside of some dirty old, like a uh, strip mall for lack of a better word. You know, it doesn't exactly look like a, you know, big business. And I just think to myself, well, maybe he's just being frugal, you know, trying to keep costs low. And so we walk in and um, there's one person sitting in kind of like an empty office behind a desk and, you know, it, it doesn't look like a, you know, a lot of big business is going on in this place. Trust me. And, um, you know, it's a secretary and she says, Oh, so-and-so he's not here yet. You know, you know, so we wait like 20, the guy's 20 minutes late to the meeting and he walks in and he's wearing, <laughs> it's a surf town, right? And he had gone surfing that morning. He's got like kind of like long curly hair. He's wearing a t-shirt, really short, cut off the jean shorts and, and flip flops. And he's like, Hey guys, you know, sorry, I'm late. Come on in. And I'm just like, okay, well, you know, he's late, but that's fine. You know, he just sold his company. He deserves to go surfing. So we walk into the next room, which is the conference room, and there's literally three folding chairs, and that's it. And there's no windows in this room. There's no windows, three folding chairs, like a dirty carpet. And I'm telling you, it smelled like somebody had held a – like Snoop Dogg had, smelled, had held a party there the night before, right? Just – so, but, you know, I'm trying to keep it together because I'm Mr. Business and I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to build my career and I'm trying to close this business. And, you know, my, look at my buddy, he's already laughing and, and I'm, you know, but I'm, I'm Mr. Serious. So we sit down in these chairs and we've got two folding chairs and the guy sits across from us in his folding chair and he's kind of leaning back, you know, and there's literally, there's no pictures in this room. There's no windows, there's nothing. And so I'm, I'm keeping eye contact with this guy trying to, you know, trying to get to create this rapport. And I'm kind of giving him our pitch of why we're the greatest firm in the world and why he needs to put his money. In stuff. And every now and then I look over at my buddy thinking he's going to jump in. You know, the whole reason he came is he's going to, you know, use his expertise to help me close this business. And every time I look over, he's just got this big shit eating grin on his face and, and, and he's like chuckling almost. And I'm like, what? You know, and I'm starting to get more and more pissed off because I, I'm expecting him to help out. So I'm looking at, you know, looking him in the eye, looking the other guy in the eye, back and forth. And I'm continuing to give our speech, and I keep trying to get my buddy to chime in. And he literally starts laughing. And, and I'm like, what? The? And I look back, and, and my eyes, you know, kind of went from this guy's eyes to lower. And the only way to say it is this guy's stuff is just hanging out right there for everybody to see. And at that point, I kind of lost it. And I look back at my buddy, and he is literally about ready to fall off the chair laughing. And I don't know how – it's all kind of a blur to me after that. I don't know how we got out of there. 
So we basically <laughs> wrapped the meeting up, walked out. And um, I, I guess the whole moral of the story is sometimes the money is just not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta draw the line anyway, somewhere. If, you gotta draw the. Line. I don't know if that, I don't. I don't know if that. You gotta draw the line somewhere. So you know, I, I don't know if that's the kind of story or not. But that's that's about the best one I. That, that's um, <laughs> that, that's you, you're you're right because not a lot of clients uh, junk is hanging out while you go visit them. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, okay. What a nightmare. Well. Look, yeah. Well, Brent, I'm going to be hugely upset that I'm missing uh, going out with you because you tell the greatest stories and uh, I, I'm actually, I, I feel like I should hop on a plane and join Patrick in San Francisco because I think we'd have a lot of fun. But thanks so a lot for being on the show today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And remember, Market Huddle listeners, you want to go hear more of uh, Brent's stories like that, you go to the bar. There's probably some even saucier ones that you can hear up uh, that he won't and tell just- us online. Just one last closing thing. If you do want to come and join us at the uh, Silver and Gold Summit and watch uh, us uh, have a, a, a nice debate on the stage, uh, if you're going to go to the Silver and Gold Summit website, if you use the promo code MACRO50, you can get uh, 50% off of the ticket. And so make sure you take advantage of the promo code MACRO50 when registering for the tickets. And we look forward to seeing uh, many of our Ma- Market Huddle listeners out for that. So thanks so uh, Brent for joining us. It was an awesome story and I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks, bud. Awesome. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks.